There are a number of businesses around Perth lucky enough to have a little plot of land out the front to call their own. And it's a great opportunity for organisations to show off their water-wise street cred with a bit of smart garden design. Now, being water-wise doesn't just save water. It projects this really eco-friendly image. And for businesses like the one that owns the garden behind me I'm going to show you around today, that is vital and it's a real win-win. Our business owner today is Sam Klopper, sustainable architect. He and business partner Matt Davis aren't just saving money and water with this water-wise garden, they're educating their clients. So Sam, your business is located in Subiaco, home of the cottage garden. Do you feel a bit conspicuous with the water-wise garden? What's the reaction been? Yeah, people have noticed it, it's definitely true. We're, um, we're proud of using these types of plants and we did lose a few in the early days, so that's probably a good sign that people are enjoying the garden. But I think people accept that Western Australian species are a bit more appropriate these days than the old roses and rosemary. Your garden really reflects what your business is trying to achieve with its architecture, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We really try and um, touch the ground lightly with our, with our architecture. Our buildings typically are low energy, so they're not a lot of heating, not a lot of cooling. And with our gardens, they're low maintenance, low use of resources, and they're really easy to maintain. A lot of thought went into choosing the right plants for this garden. And Sam, well, he's not a gardener, so what he did was engage a water-wise landscape designer. You could do it yourself, though. All you have to do is log on to the Water Corporation's website, you punch in your postcode, and it comes up with a list of plants that are just right for your area. Sam, there's a lot of colour in this garden. It really holds its own against those cottage gardens, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a preconception that native gardens have to be drab, but there's lots of beautiful flowering plants. I mean, one of my favourites are the grevilleas because it keeps the, the honey eaters come in. There's some beautiful acacias which flower all through the year and they're really seasonal, but a little exotic, but probably my favourite here is the money tree. We're pretty superstitious here and it's meant to be really good luck, so it brings our business good luck here, which we love. And it's got a beautiful colour and beautiful textures. What sort of things have you put into the garden to make it water-wise and low maintenance? Uh, there's some simple things that we do. Look, we protect the roots of the plants with the mulch, and that's easy. But it's also got a subsoil reticulation system, which is a really efficient way of reticulating the water. And then it's all run off a really simple uh, electronic system, which comes on automatically. It's got a little doohickey which tells if it's been raining, so we don't have to, it, it turns itself off if it's been raining. So it's great, the two days a week. But this garden hasn't had its retic on for seven months. So you, know, you can see that a good water-wise garden will look after itself. We come out here with the office on a Friday afternoon, maybe do a little bit of a, a tidy up as a last thing, but Matt and I just keep, keep an eye on it, but you don't have to be a gardener to look after it, it looks after itself pretty much. If you're looking at taking up the smart water thinking challenge at your business, remember to include the garden. And if you're looking for some inspiration, you can check out the Water Corporation's website. They have a raft of good ideas, as does Trevor and the whole team at the Garden Gurus.